This thing on your wrist right here could save your life. Not theoretically, not someday, right now. Smartwatches are already spotting strokes before they happen, calling ambulances after falls, alerting people to silent heart conditions, and more. These are clearly more than just glorified step counters. But if all that is true, why don't healthcare systems trust them? Why doesn't the NHS tap into their potential to protect us? I'm an NHS GP who has one of these, and after doing a bit of a deep dive, I feel I'm in a good place to show you how smartwatches could actually save your life. Why our healthcare system doesn't trust them, and the hidden danger with smartwatches nobody speaks about that you really need to be aware of. Imagine this, one minute you're fine, and the next, you can't speak properly or move your right arm. A blood clot is blocking an artery in your brain, causing a part of your brain to literally die. A stroke, potentially leaving you permanently disabled or even dead within minutes. So how can a smartwatch help? How can something on your wrist detect something in your brain before it happens? Well, here's the twist. Most strokes don't start in the brain and up to a third of them actually start in the heart due to a condition called atrial fibrillation or AF. This is where the heart beats out of rhythm, creating turbulence, blood swirling around, just like it's in a washing machine, which makes blood more likely to clot. And if one of these clots breaks free, dislodges and floats away to your brain, boom, that's a stroke. Now atrial fibrillation often causes symptoms like palpitations and lightheadedness or dizziness, but sometimes it doesn't cause any symptoms, making it incredibly difficult for you to pick up, but not for your smartwatch. But if atrial fibrillation is caught early, there are medications that can thin your blood, making clots less likely to happen, significantly reducing any chance of you having a stroke. Okay, next imagine this. You are completely alone. You're going about your day. Maybe you're making a cup of tea, climbing the stairs, out on a morning jog, and you suddenly collapse. Nobody sees, you're lying there, unable to move, nobody is there to help. And that's where smartwatches might be stepping in again, because a lot of them are fitted with fall detection software, measuring impact, motion, stillness. If it thinks you've collapsed, it sounds an alert, and if you don't respond, it automatically calls the emergency services. Think about that. No panic button, no reaching for your phone, no calling for help. And this isn't just covering the elderly person living alone at home. This is the runner who trips alone on a trail, the parent who faints while at home alone with the kids. And it doesn't stop there because smartwatches can now track oxygen levels that might be warning signs for lung disease, irregular heartbeats, some even give you a mini ECG, and then the sleep quality, which I'm gonna give you more about specifically in a moment. So if they're that good, why does the NHS hold back? Here's the truth. I do trust these watches to a point. If someone comes in to me and they show me what's happened on their smartwatch, some sort of alert that it's given them about their heart rhythm, for example, I would take that seriously. I certainly wouldn't ignore it. Some of these watches can detect atrial fibrillation with up to 95% accuracy. But here's where it gets a bit tricky. These smartwatches, they're not medical devices, not really anyway. They have different algorithms, different sensors, and can give you different readings, sometimes just depending on which wrist you put it on. So with those type of inconsistencies, it's hard to rely on them. Because at the end of the day, they're not really there to diagnose. Their main purpose is to entertain. They're there to count your steps, check your sleep score, record your heart rhythm and your heart rates, all data for you to feel more involved and more importantly, to get you to look at your phone. Because look at this, the Apple Watch is one of the most accurate out there, and even they say it. Their ECG app is for over-the-counter informational use only, and not to replace traditional methods of diagnosis. And you see, because they're not classified as medical equipment, they don't have to jump through the same hoops, the clinical trials, the regulatory body checks that standard medical equipment has to jump through. So you can see why the NHS is a little bit cautious about them. Now that being said, they're getting too accurate to ignore. 
That's why we're now seeing NHS backed pilot schemes trialing smartwatches for millions of people at risk. And it's not the first time we've seen something like this either. We used to rely on finger prick tests for diabetes. Now the NHS prescribes real time glucose monitors, wearable tech that streams live readings to your phone. So the door is not closed, it's just opening slowly. But there's a bigger issue we need to talk about. It seems it's in everybody's best interest to get this tech smarter, more accurate, more reliable, standardized across the board, all with the aim of making us happier and healthier for longer. But as crazy and all as it sounds, could it be doing the opposite? Here's what most people don't think about. Even when your smartwatch is right, it can still mess with your head. I've seen it before where people feel absolutely fine and then suddenly they're panicked over a dip in their heart rate or a spike in their stress levels. And once you start checking, it can be hard to stop. For example this, you wake up feeling absolutely fine. You look at your watch and your watch says your sleep was terrible. And this starts to play on your mind. It starts to make you nervous about why aren't you sleeping right? What do you need to change? And going to bed that night with that low level of anxiety, guess what it does? It stops you sleeping right. This is actually becoming more common than you think. So common that it actually has a name for it now called orthosomnia. Or it tells you that your resting heart rate is getting higher. And that makes you nervous. And that elevates your stress levels and elevates your heart rate further, which makes you more stressed. And this is what health anxiety is. You start to doubt your own body and down the rabbit hole you go. And these smartwatches, they can feed it, not with answers, but with endless questions. Graphs without context, warning signs without explanations, and keeping you with just enough uncertainty to keep you worried. It's that paradox really, isn't it? Where the more information you have, the less at peace you feel. And that's because you're no longer listening to your body, you're watching it. Now there's one more feature that deserves a very special mention, sleep. Because if your watch keeps flagging poor sleep, suggest oxygen dips during the night, if you wake up shattered no matter how early you went to bed, it might not be stress, it might not be the kids, it might not be just who you are. It might be a condition that millions of people suffer with, something that increases the risk of you having heart attacks, high blood pressure, even car accidents. Something that silently wrecks your sleep and chips away at night after night after night. It's called obstructive sleep apnea and although smartwatches can't diagnose it, they may give you the first piece of the puzzle. I've made a whole video on it here, what it is, why it matters and how you can find it. So if you're someone who's tired all the time and can't figure out why and can't get anywhere, maybe this video is for you. Thanks for watching, I hope it was useful and maybe I'll see you over there. Bye bye.